All right, now uh, let's uh, take a look at the commodities market. We see uh, global stock markets were rattled yesterday with U.S. inflation data hitting uh, a level last seen in 1981. Let's uh, drill down on this and other matters. Now we have Longi, the four uh, analyst financial derivatives company, join us right here in the studio. Uh, great to have you, Longi. Great to be here. Yeah, quite, quite uh, a big number yeah, we saw uh, yesterday, but it seems it was qu quite expected. Yeah, uh, definitely. It was, like you mentioned, the largest uh, increase since was in the 1980s and so on. But yeah, the, the market barely reacted. I believe the S&P 500 only dips by about 0.51%. But well, they still ended red, though. It still ended red. Mm -hmm. Dow Jones only fell by about 300 points. So it was largely expected. It wasn't as big as uh, a exactly. big uh, drop that we would uh, see, you know, normally. Yeah, it wasn't as big. I, I think yeah, it, it's more... Because at this point, the market has priced in that, okay, inflation has gone up, what, the past three, four, five months. If the Fed is going to raise interest rates. So the market has priced this in now at this point. Uh, we've actually seen expectations rise in regards to interest rate hikes. So we know the Fed raised interest rates by about 75 base points at their last meeting. And it was it is widely expected that they were going to raise again at 75 base points in their next upcoming meeting. But then because of what we've seen, uh, yesterday, I believe about 76% of respondents that were polled believe that a 100 basis point hike is now on the table. So, yeah, that is something we could potentially see. A 100 basis points. Exactly. And obviously, the markets are going to react to that. Markets will react to that. Or, or is that priced in already? Um, Sort of, to an extent. Because, I mean, look at Canada. Canada raised uh, interest rates by 100 basis points for the first time in a very long while, too. So it is widely expected that the Fed could potentially do this. And, of course, the market is expecting this. So, yeah, it is sort of largely priced in. And it seems to uh, counter that narrative, you know, that they were talking about how inflation in the U.S. might actually be peaking. It seems that's... That's not happening with this. Uh, so one thing that is important is that inflation, what we're seeing is, is actually, it's a lagging indicator, especially when the Fed uh, raises interest rates. We're not going to see the effect of that soon, maybe two, three months down the line. So if indeed we do have a 100 basis points hike this month or whenever, we will not see the effect of that till two, three months. So yeah, it is countering the notion that inflation is speaking, but we, we can't really be too sure of that at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite quite difficult to tell, you know, with all the headwinds still, you exactly. know, uh, out there. And uh, looking at uh, back here now in Nigeria, obviously this is going to have an impact, yeah. you know, for you know countries like Nigeria. Uh, what are we expecting at this time? Yeah, so uh, we are projecting an 18.4 percent increase in. Uh, we are expecting inflation to rise to 18.4 percent for the month of June, uh, largely due to, of course, rising food and fuel costs, and of course because of the impact that uh, rising rates are having on the value of our currencies. Of course, we know uh, once rates rise abroad and uh, currencies rise, the dollar, the DXY index is at its highest level in a very, very long time. This is going to have a dampening effect on the value of the Naira and, of course, stoke uh, issues of imported inflation and so on. So this is really going to help drive up inflation domestically. So we are definitely going to see ramifications of that domestically in Nigeria. And, and looking at, you know, the, the, the uh, MPC meeting, that's yeah. coming up, you know, next week. Do you think we're going to see a bigger rate hike, you know, for Nigeria? Yeah, it, it is very likely. The probability of that has increased, especially given what we saw in the U.S. yesterday. Uh, we know the Fed, the, sorry, the MPC rate increased uh, rates by 150 basis points right. at its last meeting, first time in a very long time that they'd done that. So we could see a similar hike at uh, the, the next meeting, I believe, uh, on the 25th or 26th of this month. Or we could see something even, even bigger because uh, inflation has refused to let up. Inflation is on a rampage globally. Uh, central banks are raising rates. U.S. Fed, we can expect at least a 75 basis point hike. Bank of England, they've increased rates at four or five of their past consecutive meetings. The European Central Bank, too, they're going to raise rates for the first time in 11 years. So the whole global... Because industry. we see that parity, exactly. you know, happening with uh, uh, the euro, the euro uh, and the dollar. Especially, yeah. And that's because they've not been raising they rates. They haven't been raising rates. The euro has crashed first time. Or it's about level with the dollar for first time in 20 years or thereabouts. And even domestically, Ghana too, Ghana's inflation has spiked to new high and they've, they've increased interest rates. So we can't very much expect the MPC to follow this trend at their next meeting. And with all of these rate hikes we're seeing, inflation is still not budging. It's not still budging. moving higher. Yeah. What else is there? So I think it points to the fact that the inflation that we're seeing isn't necessarily um, 
a cost. Uh, sorry, it's not it's a not monetary thing. It's right. a, yeah, it's not a demand side thing. It's more of a cost push thing. It's because prices are high. So raising interest rates would, would not have the sort of desired effect that central bankers would love it to have. Why aren't so, central bankers seeing that at this point? Aren't they seeing that this type of inflation yeah. cannot be fought with rates? Aren't they seeing that? Yeah, but the truth is there's only so many tools that they have at their disposal in order to sort of uh, affect interest rates. So it's, I mean, we have seen the CBM push out policies to boost agricultural production domestically and things and things like that. But then uh, in regards to the actual monetary tools at, in the toolbox of the MPC, there's, there's only so much they can do. And it's not as if the rising uh, interest rates do not have an effect. They do have an effect, just the effect is just muted. It's not as much as the central bankers would love it to have. And, and looking at, you know, Nigeria's situation now, we've hiked rates uh, recently, we're still seeing inflation go yeah. up, and, you know, we're seeing other countries, uh, the U.S. and, you know, other zones, uh, they are, we're seeing their inflation actually go up at this yeah. point. So um, looking at Nigeria's situation now, what else is there? What else can the uh, MPC play with, you know, at this point, aside rates? I mean, there's always a fiscal policy looking at it from the point of view of taxes, but then taxes are always a very tricky thing to go into or delve into. Manufacturers are struggling exactly. right manufacturers now with production. Struggling. The most surefire way would be to try and boost uh, domestic forex foreign exchange supply. That would help to uh, provide foreign exchange for manufacturers and importers, which would, of course, help to strengthen the value of the Naira and, of course, uh, help to boost, uh, reduce sort of the supply disruptions that were seen domestically. So that would definitely help to uh, ease some of the inflationary pressure that was seen domestically. But then we, we do know that the external reserves are down about uh, three to about three to two percent or so from the beginning of the year. So the CBN is sort of struggling and finding hard to sort of supply forex to the market to the market uh, recently. So that, that is a definite uh, problem that is weighing on their ability to defend the NARA. All central bankers struggling, you know, yeah. with inflation right now. We're looking at the oil market. We've seen uh, prices below $100. Yeah. Will this trend continue? Um, so right now, it, it is a very strong tussle between supply fears and, of course, uh, demand uh, dampening, you know, rather demand for. So, or like we've discussed, issues or regard or concerns regarding to a global recession are weighing on fears, or rather weighing on oil demand. I believe uh, OPEC is set to review their oil quota, so that could help to ease some of the supply concerns that we're seeing. You also have uh, issues in regards to demand in uh, Asia. So, COVID-19 uh, lockdowns are starting to peak, and there's starting to be a, there's a lot more restrictions being lifted in Asia. So, this is sort of helping to push up. Uh, demand. So it's it's a very mixed bag. Demand and supply fears continue to tussle. But then uh, in the mid, in the medium term, at least, I, I do not expect to see oil prices fall significantly just because of the uh, issue regarding to supply and especially with Russia. Right. And uh, looking at some of the commodities now, we see uh, cocoa production, there's a risk of a black pod disease, yeah. you know, hitting uh, most of the production coming from uh, cross river state tell us about that yeah so the main thing there is rainfall so the black pod disease is caused by uh, excess rainfall and that's that is what we're currently seeing so we're having too much rain too much rainfall in cross river especially uh, i think uh, cocoa requires about 100 1200 millimeters on average to of rainfall a season to grow and we're seeing about 3000 millimeters right now in cross river state so the excess rainfall is what is boosting uh or rather causing this uh, black pod disease in uh, cocoa. So that is something that could weigh on cocoa production, which would, of course, be detrimental to Nigeria. And I'm wondering, is there any solution to that? Because this is nature we're talking about here. What else can they do? Uh, I, I don't really think it's something that is within the control of the farmers and the producers. I, I, I think at this point, it's just sort of to hope or maybe to try and shelter the cocoa better. I, I believe uh, international standards uh, dictate about 3% of mold. So black pod disease causes mold in cocoa. So international standards uh, dictate that you shouldn't have more than 3% of uh, moldy cocoa in your entire consignment. So we're seeing about 6% to 7% of uh, mold in the consignments in Cross River State. So it's not really something that they can sort of uh, protect against, but possibly proper or better warehousing might help too reduce some incidents of that. Right. And uh, let's look at the Naira now. We see it fell about 620 uh, on the 
yeah. market we don't like to to talk about. <laughs> Have you seen that? Yeah, uh, it goes back to forex supply. So forex supply is down, and what is causing forex supply to go down? We're seeing a decrease in oil production, or rather, so there is some good news on that front. So oil production rose in June by about uh, to about 1.15. 1.6, about 1.15 million barrels of oil production rose in June. So that, that could help to cause some accretion in our external reserves, which could, of course, help to uh, boost uh, foreign exchange and, of course, foreign exchange domestically and so on. But, yeah, in the long term, the main issue there is, of course, the issues uh, regarding to foreign exchange scarcity and so on. But, I mean, it's not such a bad thing because, I mean, lower currency uh, helps to reduce uh, imports and, of course, helps to boost export so it's not all bad on that front well because we really need to reduce imports exactly. you, know, you know at this point yeah. all right let's look at the domestic commodity uh price movement what's happening there uh so uh i think prices are rising and of course this is where it's talking inflation and it goes back to what we're seeing in regards to transport and logistics costs especially right. diesel we know diesel is basically the fuel of the country diesel powers generators diesel powers uh, transportation vehicles and so on and because we're seeing diesel prices so sky high this is of course uh, adding or rather exacerbating transportation and logistics costs right. which is trickling down into the uh, domestic commodities market okay uh, what about the international uh, agri commodities how's that looking yeah so we're actually seeing uh, prices starting to moderate on the international front uh, factor of different things. So grain prices are starting to drop a little, wheat has started to drop a little, and it goes back to uh, increased production from places such as the U.S., increased production from places uh, such as Argentina and Brazil and so on, all these major producers. So we're starting to see a, the shortfall that was left by the whole Russia-Ukraine crisis starting to be filled up. Right. And also on that front, I believe uh, there's been progress made between Russia and Ukraine talks in order to allow grain exports from Ukraine. So the progress that has been made in that talk sort of helped to curtail or rather dampen prices a bit more. And at this point, it's very optimistic that the talks might end up uh, passing through. So if we do see those talks pass through, there will be a larger return of uh, Ukraine and Russia and uh, wheat and grains back onto the domestic markets. So that, that is something that I know they're having prices. talks, you yeah. know, at this moment to see how they can let some of exactly. those grains out. Uh, we'll, we'll, if they let those grains out, hopefully we can have uh, lower prices for lower prices, yeah. you know most of these uh, commodities but is it can they maintain this because i know mm. russia is quite unpredictable at this point yeah very uh, i think i think something that's about common knowledge around russia and ukraine account for about 20 percent 28 percent of global grain wheat supply specifically so uh, yeah the talks like you mentioned russia is a very uh volatile partner right. very volatile party in this uh, in these talks but then it is important I mean, russia is cash strapped at this point so I do believe any sort of avenue that they can get to sort of win back some international favor, I, I do believe it's something that they might be willing to take. They, they really need that, you yeah. know, at, at this point with all of these sanctions from <laughs> exactly. all over the world. Thank you so much, uh, yeah, Longi, the Foreign Analyst Financial uh, Directors Company. We'll keep tracking that market. Thank yeah. you so much. Pleasure.